Okay, so this is it. The fight is on. Nikon has launched. Sony has launched. Fuji has launched. Other camera companies have launched. And finally, it is here. Canon have launched their full frame mirrorless camera. And we're gonna go through what the specs are, what I think, and actually, do they have a chance of actually winning with this camera? Here we go. So before we get into this, my name is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com. Please hit the subscribe button or don't and watch the video. So what is this? This is the brand new Canon full frame mirrorless camera. I saw all of the information leading up to this. I've read a thousand articles about it today. I'm now gonna tell you all of the specs and what I think. So let's just jump in really quickly. It is a 30.3 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. So it's above the new Nikon 24 megapixel, but way below the new Nikon 45 megapixel camera. They have launched a brand new mount. It is called the R mount. I believe it is the R lens mount. Um, it's the first time that they have updated this since the 80s, I believe. So 30 odd years since they've actually updated it. And it's brand new, nice big opening, but Canon already has a nice big opening but they've brought out a new lens mount anyway, and a whole new range of what looks to be killer lenses. More on that later, but also, there's some interesting things with these lenses, one being the price that might have a bit of a sting. Okay, so what else is in this? There is phase detection autofocus. Um, basically, their dual pixel autofocus is gonna be in this camera. Apparently, it's fantastic. Thank you, Canon, for including this, because this Inside Canon is absolutely unbelievable. I think they are the market leaders with this, with their autofocus, um, with the face detection and everything like this. So thank you for including this. What else does it has have? It has this customizable bar on the back. Basically, rather than just buttons, you can swipe and do different things with it. We don't know exactly what can or cannot be done with this, but probably you'll be able to change things like your ISO, maybe your f-stop with just a swipe. Probably a little bit like, you remember what Apple's touch bar? Maybe it's gonna be like a touch bar on the back. What do you think, useful, not useful? Do we like buttons? I like buttons. Um, what else have we got here? ISO range all the way down to 100 up to 40,000, expandable to 102,000. Apparently this is going to be fantastic in low light as we would expect from mirrorless. Um, this is one thing it's got, it's got a tilty screen. Thank you, Canon, for putting a tilty screen into your camera. I think Nikon really messed up with it. This, and I think Sony people have been wanting this for a long time. Um, so thank you for doing this. Yes, however, some of you might hate what I'm gonna say in a moment when it comes to video features that almost makes the tilty screen, when it, you can turn it into selfie mode, completely useless. We'll get onto that in a minute and what I think about it. Now EVF apparently is fantastic. Everybody's EVFs should be fantastic right now. So it's not really a, a, a news thing, but apparently this is particularly good and it fills the entire frame a little bit like, I'm guessing like the Nikon D850, where it's this beautiful full image inside. So good work there. Um, it is gonna be somewhat weather sealed. So good news there. So it is targeting at a pro um, side of things. Now, eight seconds of burst mode, eight frames a second burst mode, but you have to do single frame shots. You have to click like this eight times in a second to do that. If you actually hold down to shoot, it drops all the way down to five frames a second, which I have no idea why it does that. Or well, I know why it does that because it has to focus in between, but I, so basically it's just five frames a second. So I think that's a bit of a marketing gimmick that they've thrown in there. Okay, this is a big one. Only one card slot and it's SD. I have a video coming out tomorrow all about this. For me, I'm a professional shooter. I run a production company. We have staff, we shoot all the time. Two card slots, don't care. One card slot is absolutely fine. This idea that all professionals need one, two card slots, Rubbish. I disagree. Um, so check out that video. Um, it'll come out tomorrow, I think. Um, 
It also has um, Bluetooth, GPS, and Wi-Fi. It's great that it's included those as long as the apps and everything work really well, but thank you for including those. Now we're gonna jump onto this, really important. We're gonna look at the video features. So it's got dual pixel autofocus, tilty screen, got all of these things set up. However, 4K is cropped in. Why are they bringing out a full frame mirrorless camera if you can only shoot in 4K crop? I personally think that everybody wants to do mirrorless now or most people want to do, sorry, video now and mirrorless is going to be the industry that's going to lead there. And to not include full frame 4K, completely rubbish and I think this is gonna harm them so much. I personally won't be buying it for that one reason alone. That's just for me. It does um, 4K at 30 frames, but it is cropped in. Uh, 1080, and that is the full sensor, but it's only up to 60 frames a second. If you wanna get full slow motion, you know, good slow motion at 120, you have to go down to 720. Who's even shooting 720 anymore? Completely useless. They have messed up with their video completely by holding things back out of the camera. Um, outside of this, I think it's fantastic, but these things, I think it's a game changer. Um, other good things that it's got, in-camera USB charging. That means you can just plug a USB cable into the side of the camera and you can shoot for days. That's what I'm talking about. Nikon, I can't believe you left this out. Sony, thank you for including this. Um, the battery life isn't rated particularly high. It's right there in the middle. It's 540 shots in eco mode, whatever that is. Okay, now let's talk about the lens mount of the new lenses. This is where I think they completely nailed it. This is fantastic, apart from one thing that you'll find out when it comes to the prices. But in terms of lenses, they are, it's arriving with all L series lenses. So that's the top of the line. Canon lenses. And what they've done is they have brought out some nice shallow depth of field lenses. They're bringing out a 28 to 70, kind of weird that it's not a 24 to 70, but 28 to 70 F2 L series lens. They're also bringing out an F4, which is a 24 to 105, which will probably be the kit lens just to get you going. They're also bringing out, this is awesome, 50 millimeter 1.2 and a 35 millimeter 1.8. All of this is fantastic. Until so we get to the prices, and we're gonna to get to that in a moment, but first of all, I wanna talk about something else, and this is what is crazy. Some of these lenses have IS, image stabilization. Well, why would you need that when you brought out a new camera and this would have five axis in-camera image stabilization, wouldn't it? Wrong, they didn't include it. So they have to rely on it happening in the lens, which we know works fantastically well, but it makes our lenses expensive. Now let's talk about the prices of these expensive lenses. 50 millimeter lens, 50 millimeter f1.2 is $2,300. That is a massive buy-in. 24 to 105 is just over $1,000, 1,100. The 28 to 70 f2 is $3,000 for that lens. It's a massive price for that lens. And then the 35 millimeters, that comes in a lot better at just $499. Um, and that's got image stabilization in it and is F1.8. Now, I just think that those prices are sky high considering they want people to buy in to this new thing. Now let's talk about this, buying in. Should you buy into the new Carol Canon mirrorless system. Canon is saying that this is not a new system that people would start with. Instead, you'd add it to your current lineup of DSLR cameras. This is completely stupid. Why would you launch a brand new camera and say, oh, it's just an add-on to your other cameras. Oh, and the cameras that you've already got already shoot probably 4K, not cropped, and already do most of the, th the things that this does, but you, so I, I, I just don't get it. Surely they should be launching something which can be a standalone product as opposed to just adding it to your kit bag because we've all got two and a half thousand dollars to buy a lens uh, and, and another two and a half thousand dollars to buy a body. I think it's just, I think they've just messed up a lot there. Um, what are your thoughts? Would you buy this? Now let's going to talk about a few other things. Um, about these lenses, they're bringing out some lens adapters. So all of your old, Canon lenses, your EF lenses, are gonna work with the new mirrorless. 
fantastic. But they've brought out three versions. One means that you can use your, your old EF lenses on the mirrorless body. Great news. The second thing means that you can do that, but it also includes another digital ring on there as well, which you can rotate, which would add some functionality. Maybe you can change your ISO with that ring. Maybe you can change your aperture. And if they could do de-clicked aperture with this ring, now these lenses would be unbelievable for video. And that it would almost make them like cine lenses with those three, you know, focus, zoom, and aperture. Anyway, that's something that they've added that Nikon has not added, which is fantastic and something that um, Sony or nobody else has this, I don't think. So this could be fantastic. And then the third version they've got is actually a lens adapter, but then you can put filters into it. So rather than put filters in front of the lens, so the light goes through the filter, then through the lens and onto the sensor. Now it goes between the lens and the sensor itself. That is a far better way. Your filters can be smaller, can be a standard, standard size, and can be a lot higher quality. Like an ND filter right before the sensor is the best place to put it. So that is actually quite incredible and something which is really leaning towards the pro side of things, which might work out better when they launch apparently two more cameras that are gonna come out probably 2019, which is gonna be a higher end model. Um, hopefully they fix a load of these issues for that. Um, so, final thoughts. I just wanna talk for you a few little things at the very end. What do I think about it compared to the Nikon launch? Well, although the Canon specs seem really quite good, apart from them completely screwing up on the 4K, I actually think the Nikon is gonna be more usable because they have this 4K recording. They have their continuous shooting sorted. You don't have to keep clicking it, things like this. So I actually think the Nikon version is going to be more usable, but Canon's version might be more exciting um, and it might set them up for more success in the future, especially with these little mounts in the middle. But then again, anybody could go and build those mounts. You know, Sony might build them to have filters put right there. So that's definitely something which is interesting. The other thing is the stabilization. They've not put the stabilization on the sensor, so I think that their lenses are pr maybe, and I might be completely wrong, may stay higher prices. So, but if you own the lenses, then you may as well stick with it. So, should you buy it? If you own Canon glass, maybe. If you own Canon glass and you're happy with your DSLR, no. Stick with your DSLR, wait for version two or three to come out. Same with the Nikon. Sony is currently way ahead of the game. They're killing it. And now that Nikon and, and Canon have, you know, dealt their cards, well, I think Sony is going to be able to hold back some of their features for future iterations, but still drop something which is way more powerful than both of these systems. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This was my preview and kind of talk about the brand new Canon mirrorless system. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, definitely subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram, which is at photos in color. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.